Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Altna Mohta and today we are going to discuss everything you need to know about microneedling. So you've probably heard about it as a way to get refreshed skin, smoother looking appearance, less pores and improvement in scars. But is it really the right treatment for your specific skin concern and your skin type? Let's find out. Okay, so what exactly is microneedling? At its core, microneedling is a minimally invasive cosmetic technique which involves a device having really fine sterile needles to create controlled punctures or wounds in your skin. Small punctures? Okay, that sounds intense. What's the point of making all these little holes in your skin? Well, the key is that it's controlled. With these controlled punctures, we are able to stimulate the production of new collagen and elastin for giving that bouncy appearance and it also amps up the production of growth factors. With the use of these microneedling devices, we are essentially kick-starting the wound healing process in your body and at the same time, we can also deliver a few nutrients, growth factors like PRP, peptides, which help in healing your skin. And if we are using it for something like your scalp, we can also deliver substances like minoxidil for better penetration and quicker hair growth. Now, what kind of results can you expect with microneedling? So mostly people use microneedling on their face for dealing with issues like acne scars. With multiple sessions, microneedling can help in lifting up your scars and reducing the appearance of textured skin. With sequential sessions, we can also help in improving the size of your pores using microneedling. And for people with superficial wrinkles and fine lines, microneedling can also help in premature signs of aging. You might have also heard terms like skin needling, collagen induction therapy and percutaneous collagen induction, which is all pretty much the same idea. Now, what are the different gadgets or tools through which you can do microneedling? Well, the most simplest one, and honestly, if you ask me, the most obsolete one is a derma roller, which is essentially a cylinder with a lot of fine needles attached to it. The more advanced options include electric microneedling pens, like derma pen, which is also the most commonly used form of microneedling in clinic settings. With a derma pen, you can control the speed at which the microneedles are going to go up and down and also the depth of penetration. One of the great advantages of Dermapen is its depth and speed customization. As you can see here, the depth can be adjusted anywhere from 0.25 to 2.5 millimeters. This allows us to precisely target different skin concerns and different parts of the face requiring different depths. This depth is essentially crucial when we are talking about areas like around the eyes and the lips which are quite sensitive and require more superficial microneedling. Compared to areas around the cheeks, jawline, where deeper acne scars might require a more aggressive and deeper penetration of the microneedles. Another feature is the speed setting. It can be adjusted from speed level 1 to level 6. Higher speeds mean more punctures per second which results in less pain for the patient because the needles are moving so quickly. At the same time, higher speeds can also deliver more effective treatments because more microchannels are created in the same area. Now you might have also heard about treatments that combine microneedling with other technologies like radiofrequency and vampire facial. So microneedling radiofrequency, also commonly known as MNRF, basically involves microneedling along with radiofrequency penetration directly into the dermis, where we are causing both controlled destruction of the skin and delivering heat to the dermis at the same time. This combination of physical energy with thermal energy can help in a more robust collagen production in theory, but it might not be suited for people who have a darker skin tone just because such intense heat can sometimes actually lead to paradoxical hyperpigmentation. And then there is vampire facial, the procedure that was made mainstream by our very own Kim Kardashian. The vampire facial combines microneedling with platelet-rich plasma. For platelet-rich plasma, we would draw out blood from your body, centrifuge it to get the topmost part of your blood which contains the highest amount of growth factors in the platelets and we directly inject it into your skin using microneedling. This combination of growth factors along with the mechanistic controlled trauma caused by microneedling can actually help in boosting the collagen production to a higher amount compared to just regular microneedling. Unlike MNRF, Vampire Facial is also suited for darker skin tones and it can actually help with also reducing the discoloration in the skin. 
talking about the benefits, some studies have found that microneedling can actually help in increasing the collagen and elastic production by up to a few hundred times, which essentially translates cosmetically as more plump skin, firmer appearance of your skin, reduction in the pore size, and a more even complexion. What else can microneedling help with? There are some studies, mostly small scale studies, that have found that microneedling also helps with stretch marks and melasma. Beyond skin, microneedling also has research proven benefits in trichology, specifically in a certain type of temporary hair loss called telogen effluvium, which happens due to factors like mental stress, physical illness and nutritional deficiencies or temporary hormonal imbalances. Through microneedling, we can also deliver drugs like biotin, sorpamato, peptides and even finasteride and minoxidil directly into the hair follicles to increase the hair growth. There is also emerging evidence that shows that microneedling is useful in the treatment of male or female pattern hair loss called androgenetic alopecia and a different form of autoimmune hair loss called alopecia areata. It's fascinating how versatile microneedling really is. Okay, now what about all of those devices that you see all over social media? There are a lot of pictures of people who have used at-home microneedling devices like derma rollers or at-home derma pens with drastic differences in pre and post results. Now, while these at-home microneedling devices are readily available online and they are much cheaper compared to clinic-based treatments, they do come with a few risks. If you're not cleaning them properly or if they are not sterilized properly, they actually increase the risk of infections in your hair. Trust me when I say this, infection can be a really big problem with at-home microneedling. For instance, I've had a few patients who just had a single wart on their scalp and after vigorously doing microneedling for their hair loss, they just ended up spreading the wart tissue to their entire scalp and then it becomes so difficult to remove all of this wart tissue and warts are just one of the many infections that can increase with microneedling. Seborrheic dermatitis, fungal and bacterial folliculitis can happen due to improperly cleaned microneedling devices repeatedly used without sterilization. Also, if you're somebody who's having recurrent herpes labialis around the lip area or herpes simplex over your face and you end up using microneedling unassisted without talking to your dermatologist, you can end up spreading the viral infection on your entire face. Microneedling devices sold online have blunt needles which just end up abrading your skin and causing a lot of tears. So as a PSA, I'm going to say this. Unless you're going to use a new microneedling device every time you do microneedling at home, I would advise you not to use it. It's not worth the risk. Okay, now let's say someone opts for a professional microneedling session. What does a typical session look like? In the beginning, we would clean your face, apply a numbing cream and keep it on for 30 to 60 minutes. And then we would do microneedling on your face as stamping with microneedling pen with 50% overlap between two adjacent stamps. Depending upon the thickness and the sensitivity of different parts of your face, we tailor the treatment, we reduce or increase the depth of penetration and decide how many times we are going to cover the same area and at which speed these needles would penetrate your skin would also trickle down to your specific skin condition and your skin type. A typical session would last between 10 to 20 minutes. Usually with the use of the numbing cream, often the procedure is virtually painless. You might experience a little bit of a vibrating sensation or a slight pricking sensation on your skin. In most patients, the treatment is completely tolerable. At the end of the treatment, there might be some redness or flushing of your face. End point in case of acne scars is pinpoint bleeding over the affected areas. Now what happens in the days following the treatments? In the beginning, during the first one or two days, your skin might feel a little red, it might feel a little warm. Often to reduce the risk of inflammation or infections, I would either give a mild topical steroid or a mild antibiotic cream to be applied for just one or two applications. At the end of the second day, there would be a rough texture of your skin. Often people describe it as a grainy or sandpaper-like appearance on the skin. This is temporary and by day three or day four, your skin would gradually start peeling off and within five to six days, your skin should start looking like normal. So during the recovery, what about your skincare? Well, I would advise my patients to just use a gentle pH balanced cleanser, either a foaming or a non-foaming cleanser 
preferably something that is not fragrant and doesn't contain any kind of active ingredients. A bland fragrance free moisturizer that is suited for the skin type and a mineral sunscreen. Although you can also use your regular sunscreen but I felt that in people with sensitive skin they tend to have less irritation when they use a mineral sunscreen. Apart from that during the first seven days of your treatment don't use anything. I would urge my patients to not use makeup or go out directly in the sun during the first one week after the treatment to get best results and to reduce the risk of infections and hyperpigmentation. Any kind of active ingredients like retinoids, AHAs, BHAs and even strong antioxidants like L-ascorbic acid should not be used during the first 7 to 10 days after your treatment. If you are somebody who tends to get herpes labialis or cold sores frequently, we would also advise them to use an antiviral after the treatment for the next few days to avoid the risk of any reactionary infection spread. Now, how many sessions are really needed to see results from microneedling? Well, if you ask me, it depends upon your age, your skin type and your skin concern. If you're somebody who is in your late 20s or early 30s and just wants like a subtle exfoliation of your skin and a plump youthful appearance, I would say maybe just one to two sessions would be enough. But if you're somebody who has mature skin or suffering from acne scars, you would need at least four to six sessions to see visible improvements. In people with enlarged pores, I would prefer to do at least three sessions of microneedling to increase the collagen production who's holding the pen matters just as much. Please get your sessions only from a trained professional, a trained aesthetician or a dermatologist. Don't fall prey to these shady med spas because doing the procedure in a sterile environment is extremely important to reduce the risk of side effects and permanent scarring. Now what are the contraindications for microneedling? First, hypertrophic scars or family history of keloids. You should be extremely careful before planning microneedling. Although you can get superficial microneedling, but deeper microneedling can lead to more keloids and hypertrophic scars. For such patients, often superficial peels are better suited than a microneedling device. Second, infections, be it acne, be it any other bacterial infection, be it fungal infection like tinea, or even seborrheic dermatitis, or cold sores. You cannot get microneedling until your infection is completely under control. Wait for at least two weeks after your infection has come under control before planning any sessions of microneedling. Also one question that I get asked very frequently is that is microneedling safe for darker skin tones? Microneedling essentially is just a form of physical abrasion of the skin. By causing trauma, we are trying to increase the production of collagen. As long as there is no heat involved, it's a safer procedure. That's why I say that microneedling is much safer compared to other forms of exfoliation like medium depth chemical peeling and even MNRF for darker skin tone. If you have some specific chronic inflammatory diseases, you should talk to your dermatologist before planning microneedling. Chronic inflammatory diseases like vitiligo, psoriasis and lichen planus can actually spread along the trauma lines of microneedling in a process known as kibnerization. And therefore, theoretically, you run the risk of developing these diseases wherever you do the microneedling. Therefore, it's absolutely essential to get your microneedling only from a trained professional and have patience. It can take multiple sessions to see results from microneedling, but unlike other cosmetic procedures like Botox, fillers and even threads, the results with microneedling are often sustained and it's not like you would need multiple touch-ups once your planned sessions have been completed. If your doctor comes up with a treatment plan for you, stick to it instead of just getting a single session and follow the strict skincare regime that is prescribed to you to see the best results. Okay guys, so I hope you found this video useful. If you liked this video, please subscribe to my channel for more similar content. If you have any questions, queries or concerns, drop them in the comments section of this video. I have also added my top recommendations for skincare post microneedling. So please check out that in the description section of this video. With that, this is Dr. Alpana signing off.